In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can calculate growth rates in Excel by taking the sales amount for the current period and comparing it to the same period in the previous year. And I'm gonna do this all in Power Query. Now, before we jump in, if you're finding these tutorials and tips helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and make sure to enable notifications so you never miss another video. So here's how we can set that up. So with my, with my data selected, I'm gonna go on the data tab and select the option to get data from a table or a range. Excel is gonna automatically detect my range. I'm gonna leave the option checked off that my table has headers since it does, and I'm gonna hit okay. And now it's gonna load up Power Query and put the, put the data in there. So I've got a year, quarter, product, and a sales amount. So I'm just gonna rename this table to data, and I'm gonna make a copy of it. So right click, duplicate, rename it and prior period. So it doesn't really matter what we name it. I'm just using it for the sake of doing a lookup later on. So go back to my name, my main um, data table here, and I'm going to add a column. So I'm going to create a custom column for the previous year. And that's what I'm going to call it previous year. And what I'm going to do is take the year value and just subtract the one. So a simple, um, calculation there because I just want to know what which year I want to pull from and now what I'm going to do is on the home tab there's going to be an option to merge the queries so I'm going to merge the the data table with the prior period and I'm going to take the current year I'm going to hold the control while I do this um, select the current uh, the previous year the quarter and the product so I'm going to do the same thing on this side so the year, the quarter, and the product. It tells me I've got 16 out of 24 rows matching. And that's because 2022 is not gonna have any comparables. I don't have 2021 data in here. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is when you're matching, when you're merging and you're selecting multiple fields, the order does count. So for example, if I selected quarter, then product, then year, I've matched zero out of 24, just because my first filter is quarter here, but my first filter here is the previous year. So I want to make sure I'm following the, the right order, the right sequence. So I'm going to click away here and select year, hold control, and then quarter, and then product. And now we've got 16 out of 24, which is what I want. I'm going to hit OK. And now we've got our table. I'm going to open this up, but I only want the sales amount. So I've got that. Now I've got my sales for for this for, for the specific product in the same quarter as the uh, as the previous year. The only the only thing that's changed is that pr prior year uh, year that I've used in here. And so now all that's left to do is to actually calculate the the change. So I go back to add column and create a custom column. And I'm going to do um, let's just call it the growth rate. And I'm going to take the current sales amount, divide it by the prior period sales amount, minus one to get the percent change. And I've got my growth rate there. So now that I've got that done, I can remove the prior period sales amount. And I can even remove the prior year. It doesn't really matter. I don't, don't need that. And now let's go to the home tab again, hit close and load, and get this back into my Excel spreadsheet. And so it's gonna load the prior period as well, but I don't need that. So I'm just gonna right click delete. And so that way it stays as a connection only. But in my data tab now, I've got my growth rate. So if I highlight this, put this into a percentage, let's add a few decimal points, and we've got uh, the growth rate. So let's test it out. Let's take a look at Q1 for product A, just to make it really easy to compare, make sure we've got that. So 2022, is is not gonna have a growth rate because I don't have 2021 data. But if I did, it would automatically calculate that just because I set it up so I've got that prior year calculation, which would then look up on that other prior period table. So now let's take a look. So we've got uh, 2023, that's our sales, divided by 2022, and let's do minus one. So that's my percent change, 7.63. So it matches. Let's do the same thing for 2024. 
compare that against 2023, minus one, and that is our percent change there. So 8.31%, so it works correctly. And by doing it this way, um, it, it's a lot easier to add um, multiple years if we wanted to. And so our data is gonna be versatile enough that it's gonna automatically update if we add um, more years to this in Power Query. We don't have to set up a table for each year. We don't have to do any complex lookups. We're just merging the values. And really the key thing to remember is to set up that prior year calculation um, to set up a copy of the table and then basically merge them. And when we're merging, making sure that we're merging them in the correct way to make sure that the, the lookups are, are correct. Because by doing it that way, Power Query is gonna be able to connect the right data, um, the, the right uh, current period to the, the previous period and make those calculations really easy to set up.